All right, welcome back to another episode of the Scarlet and Blue Show. We are officially in week four of the football season, and lots to talk about. Lots to talk about. Garrison, how was the bye week? Let's just kick it off there. It was cool, man. Um, no, didn't have the. I mean, it kind of. I don't know it sucks because I like to see my Buckeyes play football. Um. Like just going back to what you said, uh, it is a weird spot to have a bye week that early. Um, right. Kind of feels like a waste of one. But, you know, I'm guessing we didn't plan it, but no, it was cool, man. You know, sat back, watched a lot of football. I think I went, went from twelve to twelve actually. So, um, no, yeah, it was fine. A lot, a lot of. Fun games. Uh, found out college officiating got worse somehow. But um, I don't, know if you, I don't know if you caught that LSU, LSU South Carolina yeah. game. Yeah, I, I didn't know quarterbacks weren't football players. But yeah, that was crazy. That was that was insane. Um, well, you know what's also crazy is how crazy delicious Stock to Bar is. Garrison so was delicious. at the event last week, which was fun to oh yeah to, to uh, record from there for for G. So. Delicious vodka, smooth taste with a purpose. Reminder, they donate a portion of every bottle sold to the Boys and Girls Club. So go get yours at where? You can find them at Meyer Family Fair, Wal- Walmart. Uh, but I'm missing one. I'm missing one in the state of Michigan. If you're in Ohio, Bryce, the closest one is where? It is by Detroit. There we go. It's not that far of a drive, you know? Go, no. go get you a bottle. Not that far at all. It's delicious. Do, and do it for the kids. Yes, yes, for the boys and girls club. So any, wait, any any Buckeye news over the weekend? Oh yes, 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 yes. So um, just a few things. If you go back to last week, I said that Ryan Day, or I'm sorry, Ryan Day said that this was an improvement week. That he one of the position coaches who um give everyone on their uh, in their position group they have something to work on, and then they would work on that and come back to it. Uh, but a few uh. I would say this is big news heading into Big Ten play after we play Marshall. Uh, Dom and Jackson is officially back, our best offensive lineman. That is our left guard. I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, this is his first time playing this year. Uh, he's definitely going to be a first or second round pick in the in this uh, upcoming draft next year. Uh, Tegra, he has been a, he is uh, the official right guard. So now the offensive line is solidified. You know, there was a competition going on at right guard. Had a few guys filling in here and there. Um, but with Donovan Jackson back, everything's everything's good. And I'm happy to hear that because our offensive line has looked better than it has over the last two years, specifically in the run game. And so that's, that's, I'm very happy about that. Glad Donovan's back in the, in the groove. Uh, he said that on Sunday the team – Went over situation things, as literally said, situation things they saw from the country. Ryan Day said he spent a lot of that day watching football and that the next day his team came together and talked about some of the things they saw over the over the week, things to work on. And, and things that, you know, I'm guessing uh, kind of like if you're watching what, what the officials are looking at now, you get a chance to see on, on the television because sometimes when you're in the game, you're not really paying attention to the officials. But, you know, when you watch TV, you're watching the games, you do a pay attention to it. You see what they're calling. You see what their tendencies are. And then he said that the team is engaged in special teams. Uh, now, that was important to me for the simple fact that our defense is great. Our offense is on the way there. Uh, I, I'll call our offense great, but, you know, there's three phases to the game of football. And, you know, special teams uh, is very important. It can sway the way the game is going. It can sway – uh, the uh, field of posi- uh, field of position. Uh, he also brought up um, uh, Styles, uh, Lorenzo Styles, that he's been playing really well on. Uh, actually, been playing great on special teams, and I have noticed that too. He made some big hits two weeks ago, uh, some big plays, and it's really cool to see. Um, that the brother of Sonny Styles, older brother, it's good to see him out there making some plays. Um, transfer from Notre Dame, but uh, that, that there's a lot of other things, but those are the Three things that I want to point out, things that uh, were important to me, uh, specifically the offensive line. That That's huge. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize it was a battle guard. I thought that was about summed up, but 
Uh, right, right, right guard. No, no, that that's been a. Uh, uh, Te- Integra has got most of the snaps, but that that he had been named the starter yet. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right. Wow, way to make some way, way to give content over a bio. Oh, man, you know, hey, listen, like all you gotta do is, hey, man, Google Yahoo, Bing, Google Black. You just type in Ohio State, click on news, so you can find what you need. So, um, no, don't do that. You come to the Scarlet and Blue show to find news, Garrison. Come on, man. Oh, no, no, no. You you can read it there if you want, but then you come to us because there you go. We're, no, no, we're, we're gonna make it more fun for you. Uh, my voice is beautiful. Bryce's is okay. Um, Bryce is he's a looker, though. I'll give you that, Bryce. Um, talking about just voices, we're doing our broadcast. <laughs> if you haven't tuned into our broadcast for high school football, we've got probably one of the number one teams in the state. Those of you familiar with high school football, number one in D, number one in D four. Never, yeah, okay. Well, you, I was going to explain that to people that there are different divisions. I know each state has different levels, Garrison. But yeah, there's not one. Oftentimes, there's not one unanimous number one in the state. In My Division fault, Four, South Christian High School, the team that we cover, is really, really stinking good. And anyways, there are a few times during the broadcast where I'm just like amazed watching, and I forget I got to do the calls. No, but one second, I just want to. I want to, you know, there's maybe some college scouts out there watching. And for all you guys, I want you to go look up Carson Viss, the quarterback of the South Christian Sailors. Last week, the kid went 19 for 29, 196 yards, four passing touchdowns, 15 carries, 195 rushing, two touchdowns. He's a machine. He's a machine. Yeah. Now, I understand that you – you probably didn't like that I made Owen Burgess the big old smokehouse player of the game, but I had a reason for it. I had a reason for it. But, man, that that kid, uh, that that touchdown run on the punt return, my goodness. Yeah. He's unbelievable. He is. He's All probably right. better, better at basketball. <laughs> yeah. He's going to play Western. 6'4", 190, college scouts. 6'4", 190. Could play QB. Probably could find a place, maybe not QB, but could find a place on the field. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's Buckeyes. You guys got Marshall this week. We'll talk about them, although I don't know what in the world you're going to come up and talk about for the Marshall. Uh, uh, oh, I got something. I got something. Danny Cannell, I want to thank you for giving me something to talk about. <laughs> All right. There we go. That's a you plug for daff. you. How's Florida State doing? Yeah. Oof. Oof. He said we haven't played anybody. No, never mind. <laughs> uh, Wish we had I'm them excited. on the that's schedule. A good, that's a good plug. Oh yeah, jeez, that would be that. We can't say that on YouTube. We get flagged. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk. Well, let's talk about Arkansas State. So normally we record on Sundays, but stuff got a little too busy, and uh, we just couldn't do it this Sunday. So it's been a couple of days since Arkansas State, um, but we'll talk about it. I guess I'll briefly or as long as you want because I know there's a lot to talk about. But Garrison, I asked, I won't put you on the spot, but I asked for one thing. I asked for us to put together a, some sort of throwing game. I asked for, I wanted to see something with Davis Warren. And I saw a guy go 11 for 14, only three incompletions, which isn't bad, Garrison. The problem yeah. is who those incompletions are. They're not even completions. The problem is where that ball goes to. And we saw a a guy who I think can throw the football, but, man, when he's pressured, that it's just a disaster. And were they all his fault from the sense that, you know, people weren't picking up blitzes and the whole line looked bad? No. But, uh, you know, we get, at this point in time. Or you, career, or you could just take the sack and not throw it. At this no point in your career, land. take the sack, throw it away. Like, you're not a freshman out of high school. And you're not slinging the ball around field the field anyway. So, yeah, you, you can't throw three picks. So I was really disappointed. So I think the run game got going. But as I mentioned before, Arkansas State's defense statistically is dreadful. All in the three figures yeah. in all of the major rankings. And so it was good to see the run game get going. It was good to see Donovan have some good carries. And, then of course, Khalil Mullins, I think, now has to be number one running back on the roster. Can I get my flowers, please? You don't get flowers for that. I told you, you you literally sat here and argued with me about who is a better running back. Who is the better running back, Bryce? Don never says a higher ceiling. I tell you, you are horrible. <laughs> you are people at home. I promise Honestly, you, Bryce is a respectable person. I, know. I, I, I have promise to fix my you takes. That. No, you don't. 
with new information, what smart people do is with new information, <laughs> change their mind. And you are a brilliant man. I don't no, I don't want to be. Well, I want to be. I want to be a brilliant man. But anyways, uh, yeah, no, Cole Mullins is playing well, and I think he's he's got number one. And so that was that was promising. The fact that we're in week four and we're still trying to figure out our center position is deeply disappointing. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know why it's it's crippled easily. It should. Yeah, be. and Sharon Moore said after the game that he actually graded out higher. I don't know what the grading's based off of. I don't know what that exact formula is, but I thought you saw the offense move the ball better when Crippen was in the game. So you take that. So yeah, man, it was it was a, it was supposed to be a get right week. And I think something's got right. Like defense was was awesome. I mean, going to the fourth quarter, we were covering. We were in like we were winning the game the way we were supposed to, and then you gave up some bad points at the end. But defense looked looked fine. But the offense, man, very a little disappointed in the offense. A lot disappointed in the offense. But now it's orgy time, baby. Now it's <laughs> what did I say at the beginning? You can, clip that Wait, can you say it again? Can you say it again? You can you can use the replay function. <laughs> what did I say at the beginning about our quarterback room, Garrison? Remind me. I said I love our quarterback room. It's number ten's time. A lot of just striking resemblance to Cam Newton. Br- Bryce, that's kind of racist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna respond to that. So, I, dude, I don't know. I think we'll see what happens, man. We'll see. Um, how good is LSU? How good South Carolina? In point is, is that USC win? Is that a big win? I think it's a good win. I don't think you should discredit USC for that win. Um, so, and we'll talk about USC in a couple of days here. Uh, but yeah, man, I can't. I think a lot of people are upset that uh, Moore announced it. I think it was kind of a given. So, you don't think so? I'm beginning to think this guy's in over his head. And, and, and here's why. You know, hold on. I, I want you to finish. I want you to finish. I'll, I'll get to what I have to say. I want you to finish. No, go ahead. I, I can. I'll inter- right. no. interject here. But oh, go yeah, ahead. no, yeah. I'll, I'll stick on this. Um, you have USC this week. Why in the world would you announce who your starter is on a Monday? Now, mind you. And I asked people this on X. No, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I have a question for you. I gave I gave the question to um on a team rival to Cliff. But I'm gonna ask you this question in a little bit. But you, that, that's just not it's strategically stupid. It's it's just not smart. You could easily have them thinking that they have or thinking that they're gonna play both. They're gonna play or they're gonna play Warren. They don't know. And that will cause them to make some type of maybe, not maybe, two different type of game plans because they're two different quarterbacks. And I saw people saying, well, maybe it was for his confidence and things like, you know. No. If you want to boost his confidence, say it around his teammates, his peers, his brothers, the rest of the coaching staff. For what, like, like all, all off season, you chose to stay in the bunker and not give out any news. And now you're giving out strategic news on a Monday? That that's just not smart. You're not yeah, you're not wrong what you're saying. I get what you're saying and I, I would agree. I would agree. Uh from the sense that uh, yeah, strategically there's no advantage and you could argue there's a disadvantage. But how big is this advantage? I think you saw your 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 current starter in Davis Warren throw three picks against a really bad defense. And I think the writing's on the wall and I think it's safe to assume if you're Lincoln Riley and that USC defense that that's who you're gonna be facing. What does assuming so, do? It's true. It could do that. It could do that. So, you know, I, I, again, I don't disagree with you. Um, but so I, is it is it a disadvantage to do that? Sure. But how much is it really? I would argue not as not that much. No. Well, I, maybe so. But but I just laugh at the fact that like, so, like J.D. Pickle, and I think he's one of the coolest guys uh, in, the, in the college world space that on YouTube and all that. I think he's really good at his job. I think he's awesome at it. Actually, he's like top five right now in my in my eyes. 
on eight twenty four twenty nine, he said that it was it was an advantage for them to against Texas that they then it could be orgy, it could be Warren. He called that an advantage. Then this week or today, he goes and says, talk. He's he's always just, just gloating about Alex Origin, what this offense could look like. Well, now they told him the quarterback is that not a disadvantage? I, I just. I think that you guys are being optimistic out of out of necessity. Uh, you think, Garrison? Like, well, <laughs> <laughs> was what are you dumb? I know you're not dumb. Uh, I, <laughs> no, I, I could just yes, yeah, but that was I could just say. But I just we went from well, a top ten quarterback to mm-hmm. a guy who's thrown the same amount of picks in three games as a guy threw last year. No, and now you're going to a guy who threw forty eight percent in high school, has barely thrown in college, and then, and. <sighs> Sharon Moore said in his uh, interview that they've always had a plan for um, orgy. I, I saw it orgy. because it's yeah, not, it's I, not orgy. <laughs> orgy. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it's impossible not to. Hey, Alex, no, just, as some as one guy who has a tough last name to another guy who's got a tough last name, I feel you, man. Go ahead. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> but um. Because uh, I saw it by way of T.J. Ronan from uh, Voice of College Football, Michigan. And he said that they've always had a plan for him. But I, I'm sitting here thinking, if you've had a plan for him, then why didn't you give – why wasn't it a battle in the first place in the um, in the first game? You had a chance to bring him in the game. Then in the second game, you did bring him in for a little bit, but he barely did anything. And then you get to Arkansas State and your quarterback throws three picks. And you had an opportunity. You, we know he can run the ball. But you had an opportunity to go and get some passing reps in. Yeah, prepare I, him. I tweeted that with five and minutes I, to go. They could have done it. Dude, I agree, man. He is lying through his teeth. <laughs> he, he, like, like my grandma says, Grandma Hazel, you lie like a rug. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Like It's just, and, and mind you, on, uh, on Saturday after the game, he said we're gonna go through practice this week and then see what and see how we, uh, see what looks like. So we have they got wait 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 of... they made that announcement at noon, Bryce. No one practices at noon. <laughs> they this is what I'm realizing with Sharon Moore is that he that's his coach speech. Like that's he the more interviews he does, and just like it was with Harbaugh, you know, I'm I'm watching every one and and listen every one and. You're now realizing he's got a lot of coach speak. Like he just so, he's gonna say no. nothing. Oh no! See, there's a difference. When I called Harbaugh on his lying, that was coach speak saying you're the best quarterback in the nation. That's coach speak. No, when coach speak sit, is is, no, is, is, is is not giving anything away while talking a lot. Okay. Well, I don't think then. Do you know what? This isn't coach speak. This is just straight up lying. I jokingly say Harbaugh is lying when he's talking about JJ being the best quarterback in the nation. With Sharon Moore's again, let's back let's back up here. Let's back up some months here. A lot of the things that you guys have been hearing about how how this defense could remember everything has to come from within the of us uh, on State Street because they don't let media in. They said this ch- the defense has a chance to be better than last year's false. They said that the offensive line was good false. And by the way, they said the defense has a chance of looking good. Maybe because they're going against the Michigan offense. Uh, they said Dominic, they, they said the wide receiver room was good. False. Said that Davis Warren and Alex Orgy were looking good. False. Well, I want to see. Hold on. The defense I want to see this week. Uh, I think Texas is that good. And we just got punched in the face many times. Don't have the depth. So that's something you have to work through. And that should get better as season goes on. I don't think USC's offense, while good, I don't think it's as good as Texas's. So I want to see how we stack up to that first. Oh, oh, Offensive well, line. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to my question because this goes into my question. Oh, well, I was just responding and, and, to what you were saying. No, no, no. Trust me. You can respond to this with my okay. question. Trust me. All right. Knowing all the lies that have come out of, the, out of your guys' program. Coach speak. It's not – that's not coach speak. Um, is it well? Like, when, 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 dude, when it when it's when it's consistent, dude. Now you're just lying. You're just lying. 
How do you trust your coach? And mind you, mind you, I have seen Michigan fans out there that say they do not trust Ron Moore or this coaching staff. They have said that. I've seen plenty of Michigan oh, fans yeah, say that. Oh, yeah, we talked about that. Like, relax, people. That's what I'll say to that. Well, they he have keeps their lying. Opinion. He keeps lying. He's no, what? So he's lying. If I have his full his full interview transcript up right here. And, and by the and by the way, he does, on the sideline right now. He doesn't look like a guy with a lot of enthusiasm to an unknown to mankind. He does not, not right. look like that. He looks like a sad. What's your question? Uh, uh, that was my question. Do you trust your coach? And what he and what comes out of his mouth? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, everything. So. Okay. I think stuff gets fabricated as it hits the bird app. If I look at everything he said in his interviews and his press conferences, mm-hmm. he's given he's given very little while talking a lot. So he says that his quarterback's playing well. He keeps saying Davis Warren has played better in practice. Guess what, man? He can say that because we have no idea if that's true or not. So could he be lying? Sure. But it could it also be where Davis Warren gets in the game and he gets he just can't put it together? That could possibly be it. So I, I don't I, I don't know about that. I do think that oh, I lost you. Camera on black. You there? I'm here. All right. Uh yeah, so I do think I do think with 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 the situation at hand, what we saw on Saturday, the move the quarterback change had to happen. Everyone knew it was gonna happen. Strategically, does it hurt them? Probably. So I do you believe they have had a plan for orgy this whole time? Do you actually because you just said that you're wondering if that's the case, then why like the text game? You're getting your doors blown off. Put him in the game, let him get some reps. Put him in against Arkansas State, let him get some reps. It wasn't gonna hurt you against Arkansas State for him to pass the ball at that time moment in time. Oh yeah, no, it, no. So so in, in early in the season, I thought they went all in on Davis Warren. I thought that was very clear. I thought that that was the guy who best fit the offense that they wanted to run. And, and, and maybe that is because Orgy wasn't playing very good in practice. I don't know. But I thought it was very clear that they were going to go with 16. And 16 did not work. And did, 16 did not work in the worst way possible <laughs> by throwing three picks against a dreadful defense. And I think at that point, they're like, oh, bleep. And then, oh, we got to make a change. And I think, I don't know, man. I just think it's the hardball way. You just boost up your guys and you just you talk big about them, man. Dude, he's thrown six passes this year. Two touchdowns, baby. Like, like he's thrown you must six that passes. Out. Can you include that stat, please? Yeah, two yard pass and a nine yard pass. Whoop de doo. He has thrown six passes this year. He literally went to he went to Texas game without throwing a pass. Yeah, like, that's I, no, no, I'm, I'm okay, frustrating. Bryce, Bryce, there's no way you can say that you have had a plan for Orgy this whole time and you did not implement any of it, especially after seeing one pick in the first game and two in the second game, and then when you saw three, you still only let him throw the ball two times. Well, the picks I, against Texas weren't always his fault. Um, so those – they're not great throws. But, but dude, uh, if you go back and watch the tape, like he had some really solid throws. And I got into an argument on Twitter with our pal Jory about it. And then Bay's Madman got after me too. And so I was just like – because, right. because 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 you kept on pushing this. Narrative. I was trying to support Dude. my guy. Hey, Bryce, I love wasn't my working. Buckeye. I love my Buckeyes too. When someone's playing like ours, I call them out. I that's don't, what I, you that's, don't have to come on this show. That's what I'm here doing. I'm calling them out. I'm yeah. After he, after after, after six picks in three games. Yeah, I, I, I gave him a shot, and he he let me down greatly. I said that. And, and now, now you I'm, believe now you believe the guy that th- that kills worms with footballs is gonna save you guys. Like no, two touchdown I, passes. That, that, that's cute. That's that's if real we, cute. How many times do you think we're gonna run the ball on Saturday? Let me see this real quick. Give me one second. I want to see how many times you ran the ball against Arkansas State. Because that was one of his quotes today. He's like, they 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 asked uh, more if they're like, well, what do you say to people who say he can't throw? Mm-hmm. And he says, "We're not a team that throws the ball sixty times a game, anyways." Oh, you, you, oh, you, who, who, the, who in the hell does? Like, you guys do. No. USC does. You guys sling the six, ball six, sixty times a game. 60 oh, times not with a game. this. Not with this hey, team. Hey, hey, Bryce, you want a fun stat? Every year we had CJ Stroud, we ran the ball more than we passed. Dude, uh, is that true? That's a good. Yes, stat. yes. 
every year. I need to double check that. Go double check it. No boy Ryan Day. I have a hard time believing that. Go well. Did you not watch us in 2019 run for 2,000 yards? Like, all right, man. So. Oh yeah, that's because you had a, a quarterback who could run too. He barely ran. He barely uh, ran. Uh, Justin Fields. He barely ran that uh, year. What what you saw in that? What you see in the <laughs> NFL? Bless you. Thank you. Jeez, sneeze your lungs out. No, like no, allergies. No, like what you see in the NFL, we did not do with him. He didn't even go over five hundred rushing yards. Yeah. Like, so, all right, all right, all right. I just don't <laughs> like Sharon. Here, here's the truth of the matter, Sharon. I mean, even if you guys want to pass, you can't because your right tackle sucks. The rest of your old line is is can't pass blocking as well. I, I'm sad to say this because I don't want to say this about this player. Giambattista Alhadi does not look like the player he was supposed to be. No, you had and, that one and, wrong. And, and, and when you watch Alex Orgy uh, uh, back back up and pass, you watch a quarterback's feet. Same with Davis Warrens. Whoever is coaching your quarterbacks, he sucks. I, I I don't know, man. I don't know because here's here's the truth of the matter. Oh, my voice. Let me calm down. Here's the truth of the matter. With Alex Orgy at quarterback, your field the, the field has shrunken for you even more so now. For the, because everyone was already stock stacking the box. That was gonna happen. Your offensive line is nowhere near what it was the last three years. Your wide receivers are not a threat, and you are not a threat to pass, and your offensive line can't pass block. The, the field has shrunken for you guys. Yeah, and that's going to be something they're going to have to – did you watch the Bears-Texans on Sunday night? You know I did. The, the, the yeah. GOAT, the GOAT. Yeah, well, Nico Collins makes him look good. Uh, what was he before that? He had no quarterback, dude. He had – what do you have? Um, not Matt Schaub. That was years ago. He had the guy from Stanford, David – David something. I don't know. Oh, I know you're talking about. I know you're talking Anyways. About. The first drive with uh, the Bears and Caleb Williams, a lot of easy passes. Have to hit that early with Orgy. Have to figure out what his his most comfortable pass is. Got to figure out what he likes to do. <laughs> when he rolls the right, that doesn't seem to go well. Um, but he can maybe sling it, swoop, sling it out on some screen passes. Wait, um, wait, the other thing is, wait, 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 one second, press. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So. The mobile quarterback can't roll out. He can't stand. I was the making a joke because of his throw against Fresno. <laughs> Keep up, Garrison. I think he can throw it. I want to see it. Also, his downfield shot to Frederick Moore on Saturday mm. was there. Moore slowed up. That was there. So, shame on Frederick Moore. That would have been a huge help. So, I, I think if you can get a couple passes, because mm -hmm. you're right, a third and ten, that's we're going to lose the game if we get stuck on third and longs. You just you, you can't win unless unless you can con convert and go for it on fourth. That's not gonna be the recipe for our success. So he, but at the same time, man, he's gonna have to make some throws, and you got to figure out what his his favorite throws are, and you got to get those early. Um, and we yeah, we just we can't fall behind like we did against Texas because our offense is not gonna be able to get back. So we'll talk about that more. Yep, yep. Um, but it's orgy season, baby. Let's go. I'm fired <laughs> up. You know me, I can jump on it. You're fired up about that orgy season, huh? Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, I, I just I don't know, man. I, I just um. It's all right. You don't have to believe. I, no, it, no, it's I just. You too. Bryce, you really you and you can say everything you want right now. I know I in your mind, your soul, and in your heart, you don't believe. So um, like and I'm very confident in saying that. No, I I don't know. I just when I. Think about how you guys are going to be able to conduct this offense. I just, and you, and you know, and this is why when people people have gotten mad at me about this, and maybe this is a fun conversation we can have real quick. No, I've I've said over the last three years, you guys have had, especially for last year, you guys have had a, like elite teams, but you're not an elite program, and the and the reason I've said that is because. You're talk, we're talking about a three-year stretch, and don't get me wrong; it was a great three-year stretch for you guys. I'm not going to discount that. Like, like, it, like, uh, I'm not. I'm for all you Buckeye fans out there, Sean. I know you're going to be watching this. I, you, we, we talked about it next. 
I don't care to talk about that stallion stuff right now. It tires me out, and Bryce knows I get mad when he even brings it up himself. But you you don't just fall off like this, and you in elite programs there's there's different factors to it, like recruiting. And I, I've I've said this to you on the show before. Eventually, those lesser classes are gonna have to play. And now the chickens have come home to roost. And this is and what you see is what you get. It's not you're supposed to stack classes on top of classes on top of classes in, ter- in terms of elite, like in terms of eliteness. If you're an elite program, and you see got teams like Georgia, Ohio State, uh, uh, Alabama, these programs are able to lose a bunch of talent, and then the next year it does not matter. I said to a Michigan fan early on next today, he's like, oh, well, you know, you, you, what, you guys haven't won a championship? I'm like, dude, in, our, in, the, in these last three years, we still finished with double-digit wins. Is your team going to do that this year? No. No. And so I – So double-digit wins is a successful season for the Buckeyes. That's, I, like, I, that's no, when no. you look back on and you say, great season, boys. We got to, we got to double digits. No, no, oh, see, you're trying to change the conversation. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm, well, I'm saying, trying to figure out what criteria you're grading this on. I, I, like, what I think, teams I, are great season? I think, I think if you're an elite program, you should be getting double-digit seasons every single year. Every single year. Like, you're, okay. you're allowed to have a one-off, but every year I should be seeing you at 10 wins or more. If you're and an it, elite program, you should be competing for a national championship every single yes, year. Yes, and I, I, well, I agree with that, but that, that – Bryce, again – you're talking about a three year stretch you guys have had. That's why I say you're not an elite program. I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and say because of these three years you're an elite program. That's a very short stint. And then and, and like I said, recruiting is part of that too. And now we're now we're coming to a point where those lesser recruiting classes you have had are playing and the product does not look good. Georgia and that Georgia didn't look good against Kentucky. It is what it is. I don't I, I don't that All right. Really so I th- no, I disagree with this argument 110. Uh, 2018, 22 second ranked class in the country. 2021. What happened to your 30, development too? I, I was, 2021, 13th ranked class in the country. 2022, 12th. The last time we were a top 10 class was gosh, let's see, is it in 16? We were seventh. I don't know what it was between there. Wait, what were you? Wait, what were you? In the last five years, you guys haven't had a top ten class. You said, right? No. Okay. And no, they hovered and around 12, 13? Six, between twelve, yeah, between somewhere between ten and twenty, low teens, mid teens. Mm-hmm. But I think good coaching this, helps this that drop out. off. Yeah, this drop off this year is because of who we lost in the coaching staff, and what happened with Harbaugh leaving. And I've said this, man. He gets to do whatever he wants because he brought us a natty. He brought us something I wasn't sure we would get in, in my lifetime. lifetime. <laughs> and we and we got it. And, and all you Buckeyes can say whatever you want to say. Honestly, I I laugh. That's lazy. You had your shot to beat us and you didn't last year. And he made that happen. And it sucked that he took the entire defensive coaching staff and we lost was 15 or so players. So, no, I – yeah, yeah. Would it help to be a top five class? Sure. Would it help to have talent to fall back on? Absolutely. Did we miss on quarterback in a couple of those classes? We did. Unfortunately, we did. We went all in on JJ and didn't really seem to fill the gaps alongside of it. I think you went all in on guys like Dante Moore and CJ Carr. They would be great to have right now, and we just didn't, didn't get it done for whatever reasons. And and that stinks. But to to sit here and be like, oh, we didn't recruit well enough like this this is par for the course for us whoa, right whoa, now. no no see hold on. i'll give you an example someone i saw someone said that samaj morgan is an elite athlete and i said bs that is not an elite athlete he may be a good athlete he ain't elite you know what an elite athlete looks like an elite athlete looks like ryan williams down in alabama at wide receiver that's an elite athlete is cornelius johnson an elite athlete No. Second no. best receiver last year is Roman Wilson. Wait, 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 wait. There's a hold, oh, Bryce. Samaj Morgan is five foot ten. Cornelius Johnson is what six two. What's Roman Wilson? 
you can play this game. Rome was like five, six. Bro, wait, wait, wait. Your size has nothing to do with you being an elite athlete. Well, to an extent, it does. You, I'm talking about. Wait, I'm talking about. Your, size. Wait, wait. I'm talking about your. I'm talking about your speed. Oh, I didn't forget to finish. I'm talking about your speed, your agility, your route running and skills, your explosiveness. That ain't him. So you're what would, you're trying you to call, do? Wait, wait. Would you call Jeremiah Smith an elite athlete? Yes or Jer- no? Jeremiah Smith is a trans. Like he, there, we have never okay, seen anything okay, like. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, fine, fine. Hold, okay. Stop fine. it. All right, all right, all right, all right. Fine. Would you call Chris Olave an elite athlete? Well, he was a yeah, pretty good athlete. Yeah. Would you call him elite? Is he elite? I don't know if I say he's elite. Do you? All right. How about then? I'm, now let me ask you this. Do Both you think some? Him. Do you think? Well, he went. Well, he, do you think Samaj Morgan is anywhere in Chris Olave's realm as a? Who as said? A who athlete? said that? No, that's my point. Like you guys don't have elite athletes. But and Garrison, we won wait, the last three wait, years without those type right, of athletes. Stop. All right, all right. See, hold. Listen, I just what? told. Hold, listen. I already told you a lot of that has to do with coaching. Yep. Uh, ben Which Herbert. Lost. Ben Herbert. But I'm, hold, yeah, hold, but listen. we got his disciple. I'm that not. doesn't. But hold, hold, you, you also got Sharon Moore. And what? No, no, no. That's different, though. Strength training, the program, the mentality that's created by, that's easier to right, pass on. All right. All right. And, and he did and, that. And then, and listen, I already gave you, I gave you credit for the last three years. But I'm, well, I think that, that's like over, on a larger scale, that's, that's, a, that's a pimple on the butt of the earth. So we also had the the best defensive coordinator in college football last year. I think that is huge. Yeah, and then you hired a guy who's been fired from his last two jobs, and you guys still thought it was gonna be okay. But I, I which is fair, uh, Michigan uh, uh, fans. I don't just. I think that's fair to feel that way. I think he's been disappointing, but I don't think it's it's bad or or shame on Michigan fans for not being excited about getting a guy like Wink Martindale, who's okay. very familiar with the system. Okay, but, we also uh, lost a lot of depth too. Yeah, Georgia does every year. I, so is Bama. So is Ohio State. I, I just I understand that you like to poo poo recruiting, and you like to talk about the you've been talking about development for a lot, or, or a lot. Then where the heck is the development right now? Like at, at some point, and at some point, I'm okay with not okay with. I agree with blaming the coaches. Like you, this is a very undisciplined team. We didn't we didn't we yep. didn't get to that yet. Um, physically, the penalties this year. And then the, even the takeaways, turnover mm-hmm. margins have been off too. But but there's still, there's still people on the field, and if you got and you do like to talk about development, where's the development now? I think it, I think it's a work in progress. We're in week four. I think you got the second wave of defensive linemen who did not get a lot of action last year, aside from Rayshon Benny. So you got those guys coming in, and hopefully by the end of the year we see a lot of development. You get cornerbacks. Jair Hill didn't really play last year. Uh, Amir Hall, who, by the way, I thought played really well on Saturday. Transfer. He came in. Uh, and then we lost our our two linebackers. I think Jay Sean Barham's been a bit disappointing, but maybe that's a system thing. Maybe he's got to figure out our system. Um, he had one of the – he had one play on Saturday where they run the stunt, and Jesse Minter did this, this exact same play we saw last year. Uh, he will blitz and he will go engage with the tackle and go engage with the blocker and free up that his defender to stunt and come back inside. This play, the quarterback rolled the opposite of him, and and that's one where if he, oh and by the way, when Barnum went in to hit mm-hmm. the blocker to free up the other guy, he wasn't touched. That was one where he's got to make that read and say, oh, I haven't got touched. He's got to go. So he's trying to play within the system. I, I think he'll get there. All that to say, we lost we lost a lot. And you go to the offensive side, six offensive linemen. I think we had four returning starters. But that production. didn't. But, but Bryce, that didn't stop you but guys from matters. saying. Wait, wait, wait. wait I, it does matter, and I've been Bryce. It does matter, and that's something but, I've been saying for the past few months. And yet, you guys all kept saying it doesn't matter. We have Sean Moore with other Michigan. You fans. have said. Well, I, 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 you said it too. So what that, did I say? That, what did I say? You said that you still believe that this offensive line is going to be one of the best in the nation. You said that. You said that verbatim. I no, never, ever have said that. I think, I you think that I said an offensive line that's replacing six guys is going to be as good as the offensive line that played last year? No, I didn't say no, 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 no. I didn't just say that. See, I didn't what just did say I, that. That's what, what did you say? No, I didn't say that. Everyone rewind it and see what I said. I'm gonna say it again. Say it again. I said that you believed that this offensive line was still going to be one of the best in the nation. 
They are nowhere near that. You said that. I don't think I said that. Oh, I, guys. Oh, I, buddy. Whoa. Find the clip. Find the clip. Whoa. All you right, man. That. I would never. I don't. I don't think I would ever say that. Did I say? You know, I probably said that. I still think they'll be a really good offensive line, which I think they still can be. And they aren't. We don't. We don't know that. They're hot trash. They are hot trash right now. They are hot trash. They played. They played. They moved. They moved the ball on the ground last week. Against who? Against who? Against who? But it's starting to come together. That's my point. My point is, let's wait and see. It's week four. Is are we going to win the Joe Moore Award? No, this is this is this is live. I can't edit this. It's not it's not curse, Garrison. This is a family know, I, friendly I, program. I, I did not know that that was a cuss word. I think that gets censored. The words in the Bible. <laughs> I'm just saying. Not in that context. So I yeah, that's fine. I get it. You you can you can poo poo all you want. That's I get it. I get it. Um, well, it's not like I'm giving you baseless. It's not like I'm giving you baseless things. No, but you're basing it off of things you see on social. No, Michigan I'm not. Fans, no, 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 no. Hold, let me finish. Michigan fans did a lot of talking this off season, and they got to eat it right now. There's a lot of fans that I saw that I like that were saying we were going to dominate Texas, and that didn't happen. And you have to eat that. So, but I do think at the same time you're lumping a lot of people in, and I think let's just let's just see. I've I've watched three weeks with the like we're twenty five percent through the, the schedule right now. I know we have work I, to do. Like in, in right. a, like in a, in a, in this isn't like basketball like the NBA where you have like eighty some eighty what eighty two games. Like you have once you're twenty five percent through a schedule, I do believe you are able, especially when you play Texas and seeing what you look like against the elite of the elite. Yeah, but see, I think that's detrimental. I think that I think that did more harm than good for us. I think if we could have played, like, who did we play last year to kick off this? I don't remember. ECU. Oh, no, no I agree week. with you. I agree with you. I'm saying when I've been able to see you now play them. Like, oh, look, well, again, let's remember what that game looked like. You had two field goals going into the fourth quarter. So, I I don't know, man. Like, like I said, a, 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 if you guys are an elite program, it, it wouldn't look like that. Like, and like a, a Michigan fan once said to me, "Well, what, what happened in twenty twenty two when we played you guys?" That wait, was once. Wait, what? Yeah, I hold on. Elite programs don't. What are you talking about? You're saying they don't no. look like that. So if no, I find yeah. a, a team that doesn't play, hold no, hold right, hold. You you say context, right? No, I'm, I'm, I'm giving I'm giving a great point here. A Michigan fan <laughs> said, "No, well, well, I mean, listen." A Michigan fan said, "What happened with twenty twenty two when you guys played us?" Dude, that was a one-score game into the fourth quarter. Your game was over in the midway through the first. You had six points going into the fourth quarter. You barely got to two hundred yards. Are ta- wait, wait, you, what are you talking about Ohio State at the end of the season? No, no, Bryce, listen to what I, I'm gonna be honest, with Bryce. Saying. If you guys play Texas again at the end of the season, I promise you that game will not look any different. I disagree, but that's all right. We can agree to disagree on that. I think with what happened in the off season, what was lost. I think it, it takes time. I think playing Texas this early ended up really hurting us. And I think I think we'll see. I think USC is going to be a great test. I think if we go into this game, we'll talk about this game in a little bit. Georgia think, lost a lot, too. And look what they did to the Clemson. Yeah, well, how good? we don't know how good Clemson is. Clemson's been going like this the last dude, two dude, years, whoa, right? Whoa, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do, you right? Think, do you think Michigan could beat Clemson 36-3? to sit three? Do you think you could do no, that? No, we're not as good as Georgia is this year. You're, Never exactly. said that. If you play Clemson, it would be a game. It would be a game. Yeah, it probably would. But in week two, yeah. But 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 look who look who George. I mean, george has got what the best quarterback in the nation right now. I love your optimism. It, it, a lot it, of, I just it think it's, it's unfair. You it's not unfair for you. You can say whatever you want. You're, Bears the place for Dutch pigs. You should. But it's unfair for Michigan fans to a lot of them to be acting this way. I think you can be upset with individual play. You can be upset with elements of the game uh but like again no disrespect to your guys that you always talk to and they say things like to just all of a sudden be out on Sharon Moore you can be upset with how he's coached absolutely but like this is week that was week three we played one of the best teams in the country week two with having to replace all of these pieces like give it Gamma some time does, like a if Georgia we, get, does. we get to week seven 
week eight, and I don't know who's on our schedule at that point, but if we get to that point and it's still looking like this, okay, then you can start making some gripes. But give it give it a second. If we go out and we lay a dud against SC this week, mm-hmm. then then that's fair. Make some gripes because now we're week four. But give it time. Give it time, folks. Give it time. We'll be all right. Do you think every game, like from here on out, well, let's just say Big Ten play, do you think on your Big Ten schedule every game is a losable game? Uh, so that includes Minnesota, Michigan State, Ohio State, Oregon, SC. Illinois. I think we play Northwestern too, Illinois. Um, and you as you asked if they're winnable or losable? In Washington. At Washington. Washington, yeah. Do you th- I'll, I'll take away Northwestern, but like – Washington. I don't, I don't do you believe? Mo- do you believe most of your games are losable games? Like they're, like they're losable. Sure. Yeah. It's college football, baby. An elite program doesn't have that. They don't. <laughs> this is a guy who well, I got spanked. I know, on no, the road no, I know, no, 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 no. I'm saying that when I look at the Ohio State schedule every year, I have never said, "Doggone, that's a lose." No, oh, man, most of our games are losable. I've never said that. Not in my lifetime. I haven't said it once. Uh, yeah, well, see, you just changed it again. Most losable? Most losable? No, That's no, not what you Bryce, asked. You Bryce, said, Bryce, are they losable? Bryce, I asked, you know, see? That's everyone, what you just... Everyone, please rewind the tape. Okay. I, said, you you, said... I said, do you believe most of the games in your schedule are losable? I Like, you're not listening to what I'm saying. I said, do you believe... That's not, that's not what you said. Most losable? No. Do you believe... Most losable. No, Bryce, listen to, how you, listen to your verbiage. I said, yeah, I'm do you believe of most of the games are, like you said, most losable. What? That, that makes no sense. I said, do you believe most of the games in your schedule are losable? That's what you just said. Bryce, most losable. What are you talking about? You Bryce. said, are most games losable? That's not. Okay. Do you. Dude, All right, this you, is this is a holy crap. Everyone, everyone, please rewind it. And I can't wait to rewind this and just clip it before you, so you can see how, like, how you're not listening to what I'm saying. I can't yeah. wait for this. All right. Uh, we forgot to shout out the Richard Agency because. <laughs> Garrison's just blabbing. Yeah, and, and Bryce is being a pumper right now. I am. I am. Got to ride with my guys. No, no. I being you're being a Michigan pumper. He is pumping up. You want to know what's about pumping up? He's got a <laughs> one point lead on you. Wait. How do I best do this here? There we go. Mm-hmm. Tough week for G. It was. Uh, but I will say my my Indiana minus three, my Memphis plus six and a half are really good. Those are really good picks. And my Florida and Arizona were really bad picks. So, ifs and buts are candy and nuts. Northern Iowa, though, that was. Uh, one and a half point they covered by. Nice. Nice. All right. Go blue.